Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry to you guys, I haven't done a video in a while. Uh, you know, I don't really have an excuse. I have a full time job, you know, two kids, married, crazy world we live in. I recently had a accident at home, uh, health concerns here recently. Um, so be praying for me to continue in the ministry um, and body, soul, spirit. Uh, you know, sometimes when our body gives way a little bit, it affects our, our mind and, and, you know, the things that we know we ought to do and that bring us joy we don't do sometimes. So, uh, but thanks to the new subscribers for jumping on board to the Bible study here on the channel. I hope it's a blessing to you. Um, we believe, I believe the King James Bible is God's Word, and we rightly divide the Word of Truth as 2 Timothy 2.15 teaches us to do so, so we can understand the Bible <laughs> as God sees it and enjoy the joy of the Lord. Um, gospel is 1 Corinthians 15.1-4, Ephesians 2.8-9, and Romans 1-5, through 5, mainly uh, chapter 3 uh, talks about the gospel but one and two is the context we're all we're under sin we're sinners we deserve hell and damnation jesus christ paid for our sin debt he paid for it on the cross all right trust and believe that alone for salvation first Corinthians 15 1 through 4 talks about a lot of that uh so anyway i want to do a little bit of study um this, this subject has come up several times here recently um online i guess i don't have the facebook or, or right anymore but uh youtube i do obviously but let's go to first corinthians chapter 2 and let's discuss a little bit about what the natural man is in first corinthians chapter 2. Uh, i'm going to start reading and uh let's see verse 9. read the whole chapter though this amazing uh uh revelation in verses <laughs> verses six through eight about now this is rightly divine the word of truth there's no way that we can go back and read in the gospels and then this truth is known after the resurrection of our lord jesus uh as far as the princes of this world not knowing that crucifying jesus would unleash god's grace on sinners uh you know it's amazing to me to just read first corinthians Consider what Paul says, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. Uh, let's just say that. So, in verse nine, uh, there's a period after verse eight, so it's kind of it's not a continuation, but it's continuation of the whole chapter, of course. But it says, "But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that that love Him." That's Isaiah 64, I believe. That's what I got written down, a cross-reference. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. So not by the flesh, by His Spirit. His spiritual things. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. The Spirit of God knows the things of God. All right, of course. And, and the reason why I said that because of this verse. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? My spirit, my, my natural spirit, and we'll get to that, knows the thing, the things of, of me. Knows the thoughts. Knows, you see what I'm saying? The spirit of God knows the things of God. He's revealed them to us in his word. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. All right? This is context for the verse I'm going to go over here in just a minute. So only the Spirit of God can teach you the things of God, is what Paul's saying right there. You just read it for yourself. Only the Spirit of God, inspired Scripture right here, the Spirit of God inspired the Scripture, uh, can teach you spiritual things. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. We've received the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit dwells in us, uh, comes and seals us and dwells in us the moment we trust the gospel. The moment we trust the gospel. 
God says, me and my mother talked a little while ago. It's not Acts 2.38. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost after you repent and be baptized. That's Acts 2.38. Peter's preaching to the Jews in Acts chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You know, <laughs> Stephen in chapter 6, he's or 7. Stephen in Acts 7 is preaching to the Jews. Just read it. Oh. Uh, but we receive the Spirit of God in this dispensation the moment we trust and believe the gospel. He comes and makes his abode in us, whether we feel like it or not. <laughs> and I haven't been feeling like it here lately. So it's wonderful that he's there. He's, you know, we grieve him sometimes. And man, that really just that's quench him sometimes. But he's there. That's what it says. Uh, but the Spirit of God, which the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in the words which man wisdom teacheth, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, the world's wisdom. Okay, God doesn't teach like that. He doesn't teach the scholarly route to where you're questioning God's word in in that you. I don't know if the, if this book is really perfect. I don't, man will cause you to doubt. God's Spirit inspired the words on this page, these pages here. He will not cause you to doubt His own word. Come on, guys. He won't cause you to doubt His own word. It's the natural man, and that includes us, our old man, the natural man, the natural way of thinking will cause us to doubt. You see a word like, okay, uh, I, I gave a little testimony, I guess you'd say, at Hope Bible Church in Jackson, Georgia. Amazing uh, brothers and sisters up there. Uh, and I said, you know, the Word of God is quick, and it was fast, it's quick. That's how Hebrews uh, talks about. Man, I can't remember. I, that verse just left me. Hebrews. Let me type in quick. Uh, Hebrews 4.12. Alright, it's quick. Okay. Let me go back to where I was at with nature. Alright. So the word of God is quick. And I was like, it's fast. It's fast. That's not what the word quick means. It quick means to make, make you alive. To make alive in scripture. By my natural man, it's, like, it's fast. By the spirit of God, comparing spiritual and spiritual. Paul's fist and say that. Unless I already read it. No, I didn't read it yet. It means make alive, right? Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So, as another verse talks about, hear a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, hear a little, there a little. That's how God wants us to study His Word. Because... 2 Timothy 2.15 He says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not, needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you study this Bible according to the natural man or the wisdom of this world, uh, man's wisdom, then you will be ashamed. But if you study uh, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, that means the spiritual words of this book, <laughs> you will not be ashamed. You will be approved unto God for service. It's not salvation, it's service. Serve Him. All right, this is the main verse. Uh, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. So in this whole chapter, mainly the latter part of this chapter, the verses we've read, you have a contrast. The Spirit of God, a spiritual man, the natural man, the wisdom of this world, man's wisdom. Okay, You have two different aspects of how you receive truth. Spiritual or carnal. Natural. And we'll see that in a second. Um... The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, he, yet he himself is, is judged of no man. 
For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Okay, and, and verse 13 continues. And I, a continuation, brethren, could not speak unto you as carnal, as unto spiritual, sorry, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So he is describing, Paul teaches, like almost like a context. Here we go. This is this is this is the and then he teaches you something. He's like, the reason why I said that is because I can't even teach you spiritual things. Because you're walking as men. You're walking in the natural state of your mind. When you were born, growing up, this and that, you have a natural man. The way you perceive things, the way you were taught. But the Spirit of God wants you to renew your mind. Romans 12. Oh, I'm read it verbatim. I beseech you therefore, so read Romans you know, 1 through 11, back behind it. Really, 9, 10, 11, a dispensational truth for Israel, or about Israel, explaining a lot about what's going on um, in this dispensation. And Romans 1 through 8 is a, I, I got to continue my study of Romans, it's amazing. Uh, Romans is such an amazing book. This whole book's amazing, but <laughs> Romans is like, it's just a, man, only God can write this book. I mean, come on, guys. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable for what he's done for us. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Oh, I, be I believe cross-reference is Ephesians 4, uh, verse 23, somewhere around in there. Is a good crop, but I see it conform to this world. So the conformity, you're either conform to the spiritual things of God or being conformed to. I mean, that'll do. That's, that's not. It's not works for salvation. It's your walk. It's your spiritual maturity in God's truth. If you continue in what you think it means, you will not continue in the faith. You know, you will not continue in the King James Bible. When your understanding is of the natural man, the wisdom of this world, uh, everything we just talked about, you, you're not receiving God's truth as it is the word of truth, God's word. You're receiving it as the truth of man. So we all have a natural man. And I'm, I'm not necessarily talking about our flesh. Our natural mind, our natural things of, of perceiving uh, what words mean, you know, but God wants to teach us spiritual truth so we can become mature spiritual believers. And that's not a high and mighty spiritual thing. Hey, I'm a spiritual man. That, that means you're mature in the faith. You can teach others in long-suffering, patience, meekness, kindness, gentleness, instructing those that oppose themselves. God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth. Acknowledging the truth. That's another part of being spiritual. Acknowledging the truth. You know, I was wrong. Man, I messed that up. I was walking in, in a in a natural state trying to learn that. And it what you know, I wasn't trying to study God's word. You know. So all you you know, how do you study the Bible? You search words, God's words. He explains stuff to you. Um, a lot of this stuff about natural man, the nature of things. Uh, let's see. Nature is is like the natural state you were in before you're saved. And also, your mind, if it's not renewed by the Scripture, is the natural way that you, like I said, you perceive what is true and what's not true. God gives you a different perception of this world. This world's evil, corrupt, it's wicked. God gives you a different perception. That way you can discern the things of God and discern the things of Lucifer, of Satan, and the men that he is using to deceive, okay? I mean, you gotta just think, who's in, who, who do you think is in charge with all of this coronavirus stuff? 
And I'm not talking about the, the virus itself. I'm talking about the deception that surrounds the virus. You know, one minute they're saying wear a mask. Next minute they're saying don't wear one. You can get vaccinated and you don't have to wear a mask. Now you do have to wear a mask if you're vaccinated. You can't get it if you get the vaccine. That's the whole point. Now you can get it. Who do you think's behind that? Come on, guys. There's a real spiritual war in this world. And if you're not renewing your mind in Scripture, and I'm, and I'm holding up a mirror, literally I'm looking into my camera on my phone and I see my face. I'm preaching to myself. All right? I'm preaching to myself. It's no doubt. Oh... Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 14, even, I uh, know that's, na that's nature itself. That's outside. That's uh, Galatians 2, 15. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. That's just a quote. That's not trying to teach anything. Read the context of Galatians. Just the word nature, okay? Um, in Ephesians 2, 13, uh, Ephesians 2, 3, were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Um, uh, Let's see. Uh, James 3 6. It defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it's, it's just that the natural way of things is the old man. Does You guys get what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So, why am I bringing this up? If I believe the natural man is the carnal man, is the, the natural state which you are. Before you start learning scripture and you're natural, you're spiritually minded. Afterwards, you're changing your mind about what words mean, what how the course of this world is, what's going on. God's word gives you discernment, because people say, "Well, the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God." Is a lost person, is a lost man or woman, whatever. Here's the thing: number one, how do you know who's lost? You don't. God knoweth them that are His. Oh. Uh, God knows them that are his. Yeah, the next part of that verse says, uh, depart from iniquity. He that names the name of Christ, depart iniquity. And that's that's true. You want to be a good witness? Depart from iniquity. You say, you know? Uh, well, if you start being a natural man, anyway. Because what it leads to is this. Okay, a lost person cannot receive the things of God, is what they're saying. So don't share nothing about the scripture other than the gospel don't don't answer questions don't share rightly divine the word of truth don't share biblical cosmology don't share any of these don't share the King James Bible as God's word don't do that just share the gospel with them because if you share the other things they won't receive it that's what the whole teaching or that's where this mindset leads to and that is wrong that's wrong Paul talks about preach the word be instant in season and out of season he says give an account for the hope that is in you uh, in other in other verses uh, you should be able to give an answer for the hope that is in you give an answer uh, for these things somebody can fall away from the faith somebody can shipwreck their faith somebody can believe not yet he abides faithful God abides faithful he cannot deny himself they can be sealed and saved with the Spirit of God, fall into false doctrine, be teaching wrong stuff. You come up to them and you're like, hey, are you saved? Yeah, I was baptized. It's not salvation, man. Yeah, that's not being being dunked in water is not salvation. You know, gospel is, is first thing, like I said beginning the video. Well, yeah, I mean I believe that. But I was saved. I was baptized too. You still don't know if that man's saved or not. What's going to get him out of the domination? What's going to get him out of the, the natural way of thinking of these of some verses and stuff? You share the truth with him, the truth of God. Share the, God's word right by it with him. You know, you have no idea if he's saved or not. Share the gospel, right dividing, build cosmology. Hey, do you know this? Do you know this? Build, build a rapport with them. Talk to them about whatever, wherever they're at. Talk to them about it. So you, so you don't know who's saved and who's not. You can perceive something like, hey, I'm thankful they, they they know the right gospel. They say they believed it. You got it, and you just start teaching. That's no different than being in, in Baptist churches I used to go to. Every Sunday, I was questioning whether I was saved or not because the people behind the pulpit was judging everyone's salvation according to their works, what they were doing and not doing. I believe they were, they were judging me according to the 
countenance of my face because most times I was like, I see. Well, that's not what that says. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we don't know who's saved and who's not. Share the truth. Pray for an opportunity to share the truth. You know, pray for opportunities. God will give them to you. Believe me, I know God will give them to you. Um, and any opportunity you get, it ain't got to be this crazy, strenuous thing to where you're, you're neglecting your whole family, you're neglecting friends that are close to you, you're trying to go out there and just save the world. It can be something as simple as praying and watching for that opportunity. I'm telling you guys, watching, if you do anything at work or at home, whatever, all of a sudden you get an opportunity. <laughs> Take advantage of it. You know, glorify God in His Word. No matter if it's the gospel, everything, everything we just talked about. I know I'm not trying to be repetitive, but it's true. Oh, uh, share God's word with people, wherever they're at. If they got a question, share it. If they, if they're lost, share the gospel with them. Share the gospel to everybody, but don't stop. Whenever you think you you don't know, oh, I, there's no way he's saved. You know, you don't know that. So share I divine, share cosmology with them, if you believe it. I hope you believe it. That's another subject. <laughs> but like I said, I hope this helps. That's where it leads to. It leads to not sharing the mystery, which is wrong. We want all men to see what is the fellowship of the mystery. That could be the only that could be the last stronghold in someone's mind for them not to believe the scriptures. Because if you just jump into the scriptures by itself. And you don't rightly divide, and you don't compare scripture with scripture, and you're like, well, he says one thing right here, he says another thing on the other side. What, what am I supposed to do? You know, the 12 are commissioned to baptize, and Paul says, I came not to baptize. What am I supposed to do? Which one do I follow? What do I do? You see what I'm saying? That, it's that simple. You share it with someone. Uh, hey, my pastor told me I need to be baptized to be saved. I, I believe the gospel, man. What's going on? Share it. Share the truth with them. You don't have to be baptized to be saved, by the way. You trust and believe the gospel. Ephesians 1.13. And then we'll close. Hope this helped. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. I just think sometimes the flesh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm talking to myself, the flesh likes to parrot things because it's easy, and sometimes we get lazy. I get lazy, like crazy, I just rhymed, but I do. And I settle for things and, and some things are not right. They're not right. Uh, in whom you also trusted, Ephesians 1 13. Amazing. In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. You heard the gospel, you gotta hear it to believe it. In whom also, after that, ye believed. You trusted the gospel, you believed it. I believe, I believe uh, belief is just like, yeah, I believe that's true, and you trust it. It's like a, they're one and the same, but it's almost like a, man, it's amazing. Put your trust in something. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm coming across as. Uh, I trusted the guys to build my front porch and they did it. It's like I trust Jesus that he said he saved me when I believed him. I believed the gospel and, I, and he did it. It's faith. It's a faith-based uh, salvation. It's, it's not works. It's faith. Did I die for your sins? Yes. Do you trust and believe that alone? Yes, you're saved. See that? And also, whom y'all, after that, you believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You can't be unsealed with the Holy Spirit. How are you going to undo what God has done? How are you going to undo that? You can't undo that. I don't care. You can't undo it. God's not a man that he should lie, neither a son of a man that he should repent. He's not going to change his mind. That's what the word repent means, by the way. It doesn't mean turn from your sins. It does not mean turn from your sins. 
In Genesis 6, 6, it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth. It grieved him in his heart. He regretted making man. He, he, didn't, he didn't like it. Uh, Lord, uh, Exodus 32, 14, the Lord repented of the evil he thought to do unto his people. Judges 2, 18, for it repented the Lord. Uh, is he repented the Lord because their groanings by reason of them would oppress them and vex them? I mean, come on, guys. First Samuel fifteen thirty-five, the Lord repented that He made Saul king over Israel. Second Samuel twenty-four sixteen, the Lord repented of him of him of the evil. Said that the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. Changed his mind. The Lord beheld and He repented him of the evil. First Chronicles twenty-one fifteen, the Lord repented. He changes his mind. Uh, so there you go. I know this is jam-packed full of stuff. I'm sorry I'm long-winded with God's Word. This is the most amazing book. This is the most amazing thing that God would give us give us His Word. And it's only because of His grace, His mercy, His kindness towards us uh, that He would even acknowledge mankind for all we've done contrary to Him. So, hope this help. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. And the comment section blows open. I want to discuss some things. It sounds good. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I haven't fellowship with you in a while. Well, be blessed, and I'll see you in the next video.